All right, this is our, our, our second video for forces, and we're moving rather quickly. And we're going to talk today about inclined planes and what to do with inclined planes and how it affects all of our forces. So the first thing we're going to do is, in general, look at what happens to a mass of M that's sitting on top of an inclined plane of angle theta. Now, looking at that mass, we know for a fact gravity is going to have to pull straight down. The weight of the mass is always straight down towards the center of the Earth. That's what we mean by down. Um, but the normal force has to push perpendicular to the surface. And in this case, those two things are not equal to each other. As drawn, this object will have to accelerate not straight up or straight down, but along the plane. What we're going to look at is how to break up one of our forces so that we can actually find the acceleration. Now, when we look at this, um, the acceleration is perpendicular to the normal force in this case. We can go ahead and write that down. What, what this means is that the normal force does not contribute to the acceleration. It's a really nice thing. Anything, anytime something is at 90 degrees to an acceleration, that force doesn't do anything to it. So we're actually going to leave the normal force alone. And what we're going to have to do is resolve gravity into components Uh, perpendicular to the plane uh, and parallel to the plane. <clears throat> now this is something we did last year um, taking in, and figuring out how things work on an inclined plane but to do that uh, I'm going to draw a little bit bigger of an inclined plane so that we can see how these angles work. That's really the important part. So, for our, our, for our mass, we have gravity that's straight down. And what we want is to look at the two parts of gravity. Uh, one that is perpendicular to the plane, and one that is parallel to the plane. Add those two together, and the resultant is the weight. In general, you're going to be given that angle for your incline. So, this one we know is perpendicular to the plane, so that's a 90 degree angle. If this is theta, that has to be uh, 90 degrees minus theta, they're complementary angles. So that makes, if this is 90 degrees, this angle up here, theta. Now it's important that you draw your triangle in a consistent way every time. Um, it helps you figure things out. That being said, our perpendicular component is going to be uh, mg times the cosine of theta. That's my adjacent side. Uh, and here, my parallel component is going to be mg times the sine of theta. Now, this is how we're going to resolve gravity into relevant components to us. Now, this is nice because the acceleration still down the plane it's perpendicular to mg cosine theta. It doesn't affect the acceleration. And it's parallel to mg sine theta. So, uh, if we were to redraw this mass with our components on it now, we'd have mg cosine theta pulling us that way. mg sine theta pulling us down the plane and then our normal force in this direction. And we already said that our direction was primarily 
not primarily, our acceleration was all down the plane. Uh, which means that the normal force and mg cosine theta cancel each other out, or that in this case, the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. <laughs> so if we're, if we're looking at trying to get the acceleration of this thing, if we, if we rotate our entire system and, and just draw in the forces that are still there, mg sine theta is our net force. So mass times acceleration is going to be equal to mg sine of theta. Masses go away. The acceleration down the plane, in this case, without friction, is g times the sine of theta. It's some fraction of the acceleration due to gravity. This is straightforward. It just takes some practice. The more you do it, the more you'll be able to see how it works every single time. So, what to do with it? You're going to hate this. But you guys hate most things. So let's work with some uh, real numbers for now. Let's say this is a 30 degree angle. That's something that's nice to work with. Let's say we have a 5 kilogram mass. We're going to attach that mass to a uh, pulley system. All of our pulleys are frictionless and massless right now. And let's say we put another 5 kilogram mass here. So, for now, on a frictionless incline, which means we'll go to friction next, we want to find the acceleration. Find the acceleration of the system. So, what I'd like to do is just kind of sketch in our forces. We have the, the weight, the force of gravity acting on this. It's going to be 50 newtons. We have a tension pulling up, which we don't know. Tension pulling sideways on this thing, which we don't know. A normal force. And gravity pulling straight down. But that's not helpful to us because it's not in line with the normal force and with tension. So we're going to draw on our components. This is mg cosine of theta, and that's going to be mg sine of theta. Sorry about that. That's going to be mg sine of theta, which we know is going to be <clears throat> mg times sine of 30, half of mg, 25 newtons. mg cosine theta is going to be 43 newtons. You can check me on that. I, I might be wrong. So, now we have all of our forces labeled. As a quick note, if the AP exam asks for a free body diagram, do not include components. They, they don't like that, and, and they've, they've started asking you to draw a separate picture if you would like to include components. But if they ask for a free body diagram, they don't want to see the mg sine theta and the mg cosine theta. I want you to draw it. It's super useful. Uh, but they, they, don't, they don't want to see it. So we're going to take this and, and do what we looked at in class, which is essentially sketch out all of these things in a line. So if this is mass 1 and this is mass 2, this is mass 1 here and mass 2 here. This had 50 newtons pulling this way, tension pulling this way, tension pulling this way. And this had 25 newtons pulling backward, normal force pulling up, 43 newtons pulling in the plane. All we did was straighten those two things out. I think y'all understood that picture today. Um, it's just a continuation of that. So if we add up all of our forces, we can see right away that these two things cancel. By combining these masses, the third law force pair goes away. I also know, just by looking at our original picture over here, uh, that the acceleration up off the plane is zero, which means these two things cancel. 
Now as we do that, we can say that the normal force is going to be equal to those 43 newtons. The reason we can cancel is because the acceleration in the um, perpendicular direction to the plane is zero. Now, as we continue drawing this out, let's go ahead and smoosh these two together. We got 10 kilograms, 50 newtons this way, 25 newtons this way, 10 kilograms with a net force of 25 newtons acting on. So at this point we can say MA is equal to our net force. 10 times the acceleration is equal to 25. So our acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared. And if we look at this, the acceleration is going to be in that direction. That's the direction of our unbalanced force. So um, the reason I, I like showing it this way is because it is much simpler than doing our parallel equations, which I'm going to show you quickly right here. This is something that you need to be able to do. It's what we're going to have to do when we start getting into massive pulleys. So the sum of our forces for object one in that parallel direction is mass times acceleration. And that's equal to tension minus the 25 newtons. And for mass two, we got mass times the acceleration. That's equal to uh, the weight of mass to mg minus the tension. So um, if we rewrite those, 5a is equal to t minus 25, and 5a is equal to uh, 50 minus t. So we would at this point add them together, 10a equals 25, and that's exactly what's happening over here. These are just different ways to approach this same problem. I think we're out of time on this video because you don't want to watch anymore but what we're going to have to look at is how friction is going to affect this uh, and that's what we'll spend a little bit of time in class looking at but this is in general what we're going to be doing with an inclined plane